Welcome back to my channel, everyone. This is Christina, and you are watching the Pre-Physician Assistant Chronicles. So today I have a long overdue video where I will be explaining how you can survive one of the first and one of the hardest classes you'll be taking in your first semester as a physician assistant student. And what do you think that class is? You got it. It's anatomy. So let's stop wasting time and let's get straight to it. first things you need to know depending on the school this may vary but for me and, and based on a few students that I've spoken to anatomy was a regions based course it was not a systems based course so what does that mean exactly well in undergrad I studied anatomy and physiology based on respiratory neurology musculoskeletal the systems okay and those of you guys who have taken anatomy you know where I'm going with this but my first semester in PA school we did not study it like that we tackled anatomy from the perspective of regions of the body. So when we're focusing on the head, I'm not just looking at neurology. I'm looking at the vascular, we're looking at the muscular, we're looking at the skeletal, we're looking at everything in the head, including the neurology. So it's all encompassing. So it's a slightly different approach when thinking about how you're gonna study. So have that in the back of your mind, your school might be approaching anatomy and physiology from the regions-based approach, which is all-encompassing, it's all-in-one, and then we'll move through the body from head to toe. The next thing I wanna make clear to you guys is that function is more important than physiology, at least for me and my experience. Depending on where you are in your journey to getting into PA school, that may not make much sense. So let's break it down a little bit. Physiology is the tiny details that gets the body to perform a certain action. So let's take muscles, for example. You have a sarcomere, which is a unit of muscle, and the sarcomere has two parts that are mainly involved in contraction, which are actin and myosin. So in order for your muscles to contract, you're going to have to release acetylcholine, uh, calcium, and sodium through these ion voltage gated channels, and then the actin and myosin will connect somehow and interlock, and that's how you get a muscular contraction. That's the physiology of the muscle. What you need to know is the function. <laughs> what is the result of the contraction of that muscle? A good function to focus on is the sartorius muscle. What you need to know that is most important for anatomy is where the sartorius comes from, which is called the origin, and where it's going. Where does it insert, the insertion point? You also need to know what nerves, the nerve innervation that actually stimulates the contraction of that muscle. Um, and then you need to know the function. What does that muscle actually do? So it flexes the hip, it flexes the knee, it externally rotates the hip, it internally rotates the knee. And, and these are all things that you're gonna to have to focus on. You do not have the time. I repeat, you do not have the time to focus on the physiology. You're gonna have plenty of time later on when you're studying clinical lab physiology and all the other diseases associated with musculoskeletal disorders to really focus in on the physiology. But for now, you just need to find a five minute video. I, I would say 10 minutes tops find a five or 10 minute video that briefly runs through the physiology just to rejog your memory of what's going on and then get back to the function, get back to the insertion, get back to the origin and get back to the nerve innervations. This is how you survive anatomy. Function is more important than physiology, at least for your first semester. Do not waste your time focusing on the physiology. Not yet. <laughs> Next, I want you guys to really understand that you need your classmates. Do not try to conquer anatomy alone. Even if you have five, 10 years experience working in the medical field and you're a respiratory therapist or you have a doctor's in physical therapy, listen, 
You could not have known everything during your job. You might be really, really good at the respiratory section because of your experience, but when we get into studying the cranial nerves, you're probably gonna need some help. And so you need your classmates. Don't try to tackle this alone. Um, it's so much information that you need to be able to study and it's really hard to do that by yourself. So you have to divide and conquer sometimes. And sometimes that looks like calling up a classmate and saying, hey, let's go over these practice problems together. And neither of you may know what you're talking about, but just researching and diving in the books together will give you something to refer back to when you're trying to figure out an answer to that question. I have an example like this. Um, I was studying with one of my classmates online because it's COVID. <laughs> and um, we knew nothing about the perineum. We're trying to figure out the difference between the greater and the lesser triangles of the, of the perineum, which is the, you know, which is the true pelvis, which is false and why. Trying to orient ourselves. It's kind of confusing because the pelvis has like different dimensions and then it, it like curves and, and there's like, different triangles in different places, you, you'll get there when you get there. But long story short, it's really hard to try to understand this stuff on our own. And we were trying to figure out the different layers, the different fascia, everything that's in that region, right? Because it's a regions-based approach. And I could not for the life of me make sense of this on my own. And so I was studying it with a friend who was also kind of unsure. And I cannot tell you how many questions came up on the test where I remember going through and Googling answers, trying to find YouTube videos with a classmate. And based off of what the classmate was saying, I was able to rejog my memory. Oh yeah, I remember David did say something about that, you know? And so I was able to at least narrow down my answers. So trust me, use your classmate. Also, Hearing other people's perspectives on the same subject matter could help you in your learning. Sometimes you can hear the professor talk and talk and talk and talk and they might sound like the teacher off Charlie Brown after about two hours. It just doesn't click. And then you try to study it on your own after and you're trying to read the book and you still just don't get it. Like it's just not clicking. And so use your classmates. Find a classmate who you think might have a good grasp on it or just anyone at all and say, hey, what's your understanding of this? Use your group me account. I call it the Calvary. So when I'm lost, I send my question, I get a screenshot, I put a video up, I'm like, hey, Calvary, can someone help me understand this? And then I get bing, 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 all these people. Out of 30, four or five of us know how to understand this question. Someone has had the experience to be able to figure it out. And so that's the good thing about using your classmates. Sometimes you just need someone to say the same thing in a different kind of way, and that helps. And the last thing I want you guys to know about using your classmates, even if you have a strong understanding, you can still benefit. So explain what you know. The student that you are um, teaching this information to that you thought you knew, they're gonna ask you a question about something you most likely don't know. <laughs> and then you'll be like, wow, that's a great question. Let me go figure it out. And now you guys are using each other, iron sharpening iron, and you're becoming a better student and you're helping each other. It's a win-win. So use your classmates. Next topic, I want you guys to really hone in on adjusting. Get ready to adjust and to constantly adjust. It's going to be something you're going to be doing for the rest of your career. You're just going to have to just change. Even if you thought what you did in your undergrad worked for you, it might not work in grad school. So please have an open mind. Be ready to adjust. If nothing else is working for you, your study techniques and working for you, go talk with a student who did well in the last test and do what they did, even if it sounds absurd. For me, reading through the entire chapter <laughs> before class is crazy. But guys, I had to try it because my first exam did not go well. You guys already know that. I had to do something different. I passed anatomy with a pretty good grade. So, I mean, I want you guys to learn and to understand and have the open mind. Be ready to adjust. PA school is about doing whatever you need to do to survive. And even if what you're doing is unfamiliar to you, you need to try it first and then see the results. So I encourage you guys to adjust and get in the mindset of adjusting and growing because this is the process. 
you're constantly going to be challenged to do things, to do more, to learn more, and to think on a deeper level than you did before. And the last quick tip I have for you guys for surviving anatomy is to trust the process. You are going to be fed up. You're gonna be stressed out. You're gonna be over it. Like, I am so ready for this semester to be done. Just keep going. Even if your grades and you're one of those borderline students and you don't know what's gonna happen, just keep going. Don't stop. As long as you survive, you win. Even if you think there's no way I'm learning anything right now, trust me, if you're studying and you're putting in the hours, even if your grades aren't reflecting it, you are learning, okay? If you're doing the work, you're learning, and it will help you. You will move forward, and you will be ready for clinical medicine, because that's a whole other beast, and I can't wait to dive into that. <laughs> but I want to encourage you all that anything worth having is worth working for, and the physician assistant field is 100% worth it. So your time, your effort, your energy, it will come back to you. What you put out will come back. And listen, one day you'll be walking across that stage with your white coat on, with your stethoscope, and you'll be like, oh my God, I survived. And you know, I'm, I'm watching people on Facebook right now getting to that point, and I'm just like, just like a single tear went down my eye. Like, one day that's gonna be me. <laughs> I'm still looking out to helping students get into PA school and I'm interested in helping students who are surviving to keep surviving and to encourage one another. So um, thanks guys for watching. If you have any specific questions that you'd like for me to answer about anatomy, about my experience, um, please feel free, like, comment, subscribe, and I will be sure to get back to you. So much love, God bless you. Until next time.